Welcome back to Charge Positive and welcome to Lost Hills, California, where this is the second location installed in this town. This one is now on the east side of the 5 freeway and it is much bigger. Currently, as of the post on X by Tesla Charging, there are 84 of these stations online right now, which when complete, they're gonna have 168. Can you believe that? 168. I, in one of my previous videos, I covered the Barstow location, which was at the time the world's largest at 120, but now we have 168 when this is done. And not only that, it's going to have more amenities. If you've been to Kettleman City, you probably have an idea of what they're gonna put here. Now it's not done yet. I'm gonna show you the construction, but it's gonna have what it looks like a lounge, some seating, some shade, some bathrooms. Right now it's only a temporary bathroom, so it's not done yet but it is already one of the biggest stations in the world and it will be the largest when complete. This is the first time I've seen this many pull-through stalls in one location. Out of the 168, there are 12 pull-through stalls here and they're not just regular stalls too, they're extra long and also extra wide. Look at this. It takes me about, I think about 12 steps to get across. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 11, 12 size, 10, 10 and a half shoe steps to get across these spots. So there's plenty of room to maneuver here for anybody, any skill set of towing. And they're diagonal right off the entrance right there. Easy peasy, check that out. So if you're pulling a trailer and you want to charge at one of these uh, pull through spots without needing to unhitch, basically you come in the east entrance here. There's right up here and you have the pull through spots right here by the entrance and they're diagonal. And so once you're done, you unhook and you just drive right out. It's kind of very similar to an RV park or like, you know, a travel station truck stop. Uh, but once you're done, pull right out. And then there's a big road that goes all the way around and you can go out the other exit. So there's plenty of room here to maneuver if you're towing with the trailer. So right here next to the pull through chargers for the towing, we have the mega packs wow that is a lot of juice now it's a lot of fun to see when they put a mega pack on a semi trailer and they they have them basically they're able to drop in temporary chargers anywhere but to see them a whole bunch of them in one spot that's just that's a lot of power next to the mega packs which is much bigger is this giant solar field probably four or five times larger than the actual charging station footprint out here but out here in central California, there's a lot of land. When I was looking at the satellite map when I first drove in here, it still just looks like just giant dirt lot. So this went from a dirt lot to a going to be the largest charging station here for superchargers in a matter of uh, months. We also have this entire square of land over here, which looks like a mirror image of the other side. So here we have the main switchgear box, which is this entire cabinet right here but we have 15 kilovolts coming in wow 600 amps maximum available fault current 200 2770 kiloamps <sighs> there's some serious power here i mean if you're going to have 168 v 3.5 v4 superchargers here you're going to have need a lot of juice <sighs> high voltage indeed check this guy out 22 thousand pounds 22,000 pounds pretty sure that's the main transformer for the site so what I need to figure out is or is whether or not you know if it's on grid if it's still tied to the grid whether it can charge off peak provide power to the grid or anything like that or if it's truly 100% just on its own so as we can see here I'm walking through gravel and this is going to be where the lounge or tables or whatever sort of uh, resting area is actually going to be this area, they basically just have this temporary bathroom right here. So in the meantime, until construction is done on the lounge and I assume the bathroom areas, there currently is two bathrooms here, uh, portable unit, you know, very contractory construction style. Um, but what's nice about it is they are actually air conditioned. So out here in 95 degree weather, you, could, you don't have to go into a hot bathroom. They have air conditioning in there. So that is a nice little touch. But hopefully it looks like they're going to move really quickly on the construction here because hopefully we're going to have a lot more bathrooms and a lot more uh, amenities here, which is going to be better than what we saw at Barstow. You know, Barstow is really great with 120, but 
you have to rely on the nearby businesses to use the bathroom or get a snack. So really exciting to see what they're gonna put in here. So here Tesla's using the prefabricated method of four chargers per one cabinet, which we've seen many times before. It really helps build out stations like this very quickly. But also here, noticing that for every four chargers, there's a separated array. Each four chargers has its own square rectangle worth of solar here. So it appears that for every two or three cabinets worth of solar canopy arrays, they have an inverter. So this one is showing 42 kilowatts worth of power, which is gonna account for that one, which doesn't have an inverter on it. And we have two canopies here. If my math is correct of about, uh, we have four panels by 10, that's 40 panels per array. If they're about 400 to 500 watts each, we're probably seeing about 20 kilowatts of power going from these panels to this inverter right here. And so this is two arrays worth. We have 40 kilowatts. Some of them have three of them strung together, um, but that's all for the solar here. That's for the canopies. So as we see here, we have these four underneath this canopy, which has the break. And then we have the next four as well. What I really like about this station is just how clean the setup is. It's just rows and rows of chargers. Like they all basically are the same, except for the, the pull through ones, which hopefully people figure out are for that purpose. I would love some signage. You know, we should have some signs that say, for towing, use last or something like that. Because when you have 168 and 12 of them for towing, I really hope that people figure out that you only need to, because there's just so much room here. Like you see this, I'm walking by this row of, I think this is like 40 chargers I just walked by. What's a nice touch for this location is the area I'm walking is usually between two rows. And normally you'll see like dirt or gravel in here, but they've actually paved or poured full concrete in between these rows here. So this is all flat. You can walk around. You don't have to worry about tripping on a curb or anything. Um, they don't even have uh, tire stops at the stalls because as we've seen, they've taken them all out so that cars that need to get closer. But with the longer handles, that shouldn't be an issue. But it's nice to be able to walk around from one side, one row to the other without needing to worry about, you know, tripping on gravel or getting your shoes dirty with some uh, dirt. But there we are. Oh, look at that. V4 stations all here ready for all types of EVs, not just Teslas, right? And that's kind of the goal here, right? We want to lead the way of making a sustainable transportation here. And there's plenty of room here for it. When I was on my way up here, I posted on X about, quest you know, if people had questions about this site that they wanted answered in the video. One of the questions was, what sort of edge cases would not work with this site like this? And I'm trying to think of one that wouldn't work because we have both the combination of 12, at least 12 pull through stalls, very easy to access, very simple, come in right away. Combined with the fact that these are V4 posts with the longer handle, I can't really think of a vehicle that's not gonna be able to charge here. So this is definitely impressive that within a matter of months, this went from just an empty field here in central California to this entire solar farm and what chargers they've already put in so far in a matter of months. Like that's truly amazing. And as cool as this is to have ground mount solar and all this, I think it'd be even more awesome if for future projects to have kind of maybe integrate with uh, agrovoltaics, maybe there could be an entire farm growing plants with the, the nice shaded, semi-shaded area that uh, agrovoltaics uh, can provide as well as all of that solar providing power for the cars. That would be a win-win. I mean, it's, when you think about um, the amount of power, let's, if you imagine if 168 cars all plugged in at the same time and pulled 250 kilowatts all at the same time, I got to check if this, this station can actually manage that. But if it can, that is seriously impressive that solar power and batteries can power 160 plus cars all at the same time. That's pretty amazing. Well, there we have it. We, it just seems like we're regularly breaking records here with supercharger locations. Uh, just because it's, we're building bigger, 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 more, more, more. You know, if we're going to provide enough power for all the other cars to charge, well, we need stations like this, as we've seen with Quartzsite. Barstow and so many others. We now have these basically mega stations uh, out here. 
So yeah, if, let me know if you're gonna swing by here or if you've already come by or if you're looking forward to seeing a station like this. Where would you like to see a station like this uh, elsewhere in the United States or around the world? Um, but I wanna thank you for watching. Uh, I'll see you at the next Charger. And if you wanna help support the channel, uh, go ahead and leave a super thanks. Uh, it's super appreciated. Um, but I'm really looking forward to what's coming next from Tesla Superchargers. See you next time.